Welcome to the October edition of Northeast Journal. I'm your host, Joe Cullen. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll find out how a North St. Paul shelter is caring for cats. We'll chat with a longtime City of White Bear Lake employee who is retiring, and we'll try some pizza that is inspired by the state of Iowa. All that and more is straight ahead on Northeast Journal. Hello everyone and welcome to the October edition of Northeast Journal. I'm your host Joe Cullen. Every month on Northeast Journal we give you an inside look at the people and places that make up the Northeast section of the Twin Cities. A North St. Paul shelter is doing more than just finding homes for cats. They're also helping kids improve their reading skills. Take a look. Yeah, are you going to talk? Tell them your story. Tell them your story. Cats of all kinds are living their nine lives to the fullest, thanks to a North St. Paul shelter. Caring for Cats is an all-volunteer, no-kill shelter in North St. Paul. The shelter provides a home-like atmosphere for over 30 cats until they can find a forever home. We have six cats that we got from a no-kill organization in Georgia that was overwhelmed with cats at too many cats, so we took some of those. But locally, we get private surrenders, um, we get strays, um, we get, you know, somebody that finds a pregnant cat, so then, you know, that go, all of our cats that, that come here as kittens don't come here until they're three months because they, that's about the time they get fixed. So we have foster homes that they stay in. Besides finding homes for these cats, the shelter also helps improve kids' reading skills with their Cat Tales reading program. On various dates, kids age 6 to 13 can book a 30-minute session to practice reading aloud to a cat. Shelter Operations Manager Karen Brown tells us more about the program. These two girls that have come from the very beginning, they're sisters, 9 and 10. One of them was very anxious about reading out loud in school and everything, so when her mom said they were going to come and try this, she didn't want to come. Fought with her about coming, she said, we're going to try it once. Well, now we can't keep her away because she loves the cat so much and she loves to read to them. So she said, it's, her mom said it's really improved her Reading in school, it's improved her old outlook on reading itself. Staff at Caring for Cats get pretty attached to their feline friends. You want some treats? Is that what you're following me around for? Okay, there you go. And while they're happy to get them adopted, it is sometimes hard to say goodbye. There are certain ones that will always stick in my mind and my heart, but you know, if you're ever going to be doing this kind of stuff, you have to set your personal limit before you do this, and that's what I tell everybody. My personal limit is three. Because if you don't set your personal limit, yeah, you could end up to be the cat lady. <laughs> Caring for Cats is located at 2131 Division Street in North St. Paul. If you'd like more information about this shelter, their website is caring-for-cats.org. You may remember last month we showed you a restored bell tower that was an Eagle Scout project in Birchwood. A dedication ceremony was held recently, and photographer Brian Henschen has some highlights. On behalf of the county board, uh, as county commissioner, uh, it's just wonderful to represent this beautiful village of Birchwood, your very unique spot in Washington County. Uh, David, outstanding bell tower. Uh, I'm so privileged to be here. Thank you. There's a new store in downtown White Bear Lake that is generating a lot of buzz. Let's visit the Minnesotan.
I saw an opportunity and had a vision for a concept uh, for an apparel brand that better represented the consumer with a wearable item. So we're heavy into headwear, t-shirts, zips, hoodies. We're more about the soul of the Minnesotan. So we're really diving into running deep with um, niche um, traditions, culture, lifestyle, events, landmarks, places that really evoke uh, memory and emotion for the consumer. You know, I'm from the, uh, from the area, my, my dad grew up in White Bear Lake, I grew up in Forest Lake, so I'm very familiar with the Northeast Metro. Um, I grew up in retail, been in retail all my life. So we were, uh, we're definitely a, a vintage, a heritage brand, so what better place than downtown White Bear Lake to open up uh, um, our, our old school vintage brand, the Minnesota. The response and reception has been good to our brand and our products. We're unique to the marketplace, and I think that's what people are looking for these days, um, especially with an apparel item, a wearable, a wearable garment. The one collection that's been a lot of fun for us to do is what we call our old school collection. So we're um, celebrating the, the bygone high schools uh, in the area, like, of course, Mariner. That was an easy one to start with. We're doing Kellogg Ramsey. We've got St. Bernard's. We're doing Bloomington Lincoln, uh, St. Paul Washington. So with that collection, uh, we're finding that uh, the spirit lives on. Uh, even though the schools are gone, and um, but there's so many alumni in the area, and um, you know, nostalgia is a strong thing these days, and we're finding that the consumer is really drawn to that. We're excited to, um, to be part of the community, and, and there's just so much content for us to capture out there from a design standpoint. So we're just looking forward to um, finding those stories and, and uh, pushing out those designs and getting those, uh, those products out into the marketplace. And it's time for a short break. When we come back on Northeast Journal, we'll chat with a longtime City of White Bear Lake employee who is retiring. Stay tuned. Some of today's veterans have a new battle to fight. It's unemployment. The unemployment rate of today's veterans coming home from war is 12%. That's twice the Heartland average. Tribute to the troops and the armed forces are asking for your help. Hire today's veteran. Visit PositivelyMinnesota.com slash veterans. Welcome back to Northeast Journal. For 30 years, Mark Birch has been a familiar face in White Bear Lake as the city engineer. He's retiring, so we thought it would be a good idea to bring him in to chat about his years of service to the city. And Mark, I want to thank you so much for joining me today on Northeast Journal. Yeah, you're welcome, Joe. My pleasure. I want to congratulate you. As I mentioned in the intro there, you're retiring after a 30-year career here in the city of White Bear Lake. Yeah, it's been an interesting 30 years. So much has happened in the city in the time I've been here. I've just been lucky to be a part of all that. So, But uh, all good things come to an end. Now, I mentioned the city engineer. I understand you're also a public works director. Is that yeah, I have, I have both titles. I'm the public works director, so I work with all of our, our street and sewer water parks and mechanic shop on that end of it. And then as engineer, I work with the engineering department and we do all the construction and all the engineering projects for the city. So I get involved in a wide variety of, of, of projects and, and problems and solutions. So it, yeah, it's a very interesting job. Now, when you first started with the city, you know, 30 years ago, I mean, would you have imagined that you would have been around that long, or? No, you know, when I first started, I don't know that I thought I'd be here 30 years, sitting here talking to you about a 30-year career, but uh, no, it's been fascinating, and, and it's just, it's flying by, it's just the time has come, and, and we've, we've been busy the whole time. The community has grown a lot uh, in this 30 years. We've done a lot of things, I think, improving the infrastructure and building new things, and it's been really fun to be involved with all that stuff, so. Uh, yeah, I was uh, in the right place at the right time for Mark anyway, so. And what would you say, you know, are some of the highlights, you know, things that you're, you know, especially proud of that you've been able to accomplish over these years? Oh, you know, we've been busy. And, uh, you know, I think back of all the things we've done, you know, some of the essential services that we provide as a public works department. That's what's crucial. And, you know, I've, I've been talking to people about the importance of our water and sanitary sewer. You know, if you don't have fresh water when you turn the tap on, we don't carry it away when it goes down the drain. Um, that sanitation and that clean water is what allows you to live in this community. Without that, you couldn't live here. So, I've, so we're really proud of all the things we've done. We've done so many things over the years that are really interesting at our water treatment plant uh, and our sewer collection system. We have lift stations. We have a lot of technology in that. Uh, 
And so that's been fun, and, and the guys in those divisions are they're really techies, and um, they're just doing a, a really nice job. And I just had a conversation this morning, in fact, uh, with an, Dale Grambush is, is an insurance agent in downtown, and he made a comment last night at the council meeting that, you know, because we, we talked about the number of sewer backups that we don't have anymore. We used to have 25, 30 sewer backups a year, and that was a huge cost, to, not only the mess, but the cost to, to homeowners and their insurance companies. And Dale made the comment last night, uh, he had, was there for another topic, but he just made the comment, you know, I don't see the sewer backup claims anymore in my business in White Bear Lake that we used to have. So it tells me that our guys are doing a really good job. We've made an impact beyond just our guys chasing, but with the homeowners and with local business insurance agents. So we've done a lot of things. So the water and the sewer end is, is very fun. Um, it's not always the glorious stuff, but it's, it's, it's essential services. Our streets in, in the city, we've been really on an aggressive program for the last 30 years, reconstructing our city streets. And we were in really poor condition. Our streets were, in, in, the, in the late 80s, early 90s, we were at a point where our streets were just failing. And um, so we started a pretty aggressive street reconstruction program. And today we're at a point where we're within about five or six miles of having every street in the city reconstructed with concrete curb and gutter so it's got good storm sewer, or storm water collection and, and treatment facilities, good pavements. Um, and, and along the way, we've upgraded our signage and our all the other elements that go with, with, with your street system. So uh, we're in really good shape there. We're proud of all the things we've done there. Um, our park system, you know, I've had the opportunity to work on so many projects. I was talking with Bill Russ this morning. He's a local architect here. And, you know, Bill was, has built a lot of projects, and we were talking this morning after our meeting, and he said, you know, I was thinking about us last night. He was, we had a reception last night, and we were talking, but he said, you know, off the top of my head, he said, I was thinking this morning, I can think of 25 projects we've built together. Those are park improvement projects, those are building, those are the log structures at Rotary, Bill Design City Hall, Podwood Park structure, lots of park structures and other buildings around town. Um, so we've done a lot of things in the parks division, so the, our parks are in good shape, you know. Um, that's our inland parks, and we have a whole water system, our whole waterfront with the beaches and the boat launches, our marina, our skids, our buoys, uh, beaches. Um, so we've been involved, we've made, I think, a lot of improvements in those over these years, and it's been really fun to be involved with all that stuff. So, yeah, it's been a really exciting time to be the city engineer here because there's been so much going on. So, yeah, from a perspective from that way, and then our public works building, you know, we've, we built, built a new shop down there a few years ago and it gives our, our mechanic the opportunity to really have service our equipment. We have a nice fleet of equipment that's, that's essential to do all the, from snow plowing and street sweeping to patching and park maintenance and and mowing and all the different pieces of equipment that we have, but uh, we have a really good facility down there and Nick does a great job taking care of our equipment, so it's fun to see him have a nice facility to work in and that was a fun project to work on. So we've done those kinds of things over the years uh, in our parks and buildings and we've, we've just constructed a lot of stuff that we're, we're pretty proud of actually, so it's been fun. I'm sure, you know, it has to be kind of a fun, you know, kind of, kind of unique city even compared to some of the other suburbs around here in that you have like you said, you know, lots of parks, you have the lake area, you have kind of that, you know, nice downtown that a lot of uh, communities around here aren't blessed with an area like that. Exactly. So I'm sure there's kind of makes for a nice variety of areas to work in. Oh, we never have a dull moment, you know. You, 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 exactly right. That's one of the things I think that attracts people to White Bear is the variety. They start with the lake, but then they find the downtown, then they find our parks, and they find our sports center. We just redid our sports center, and we're really proud of that. So there's just so many things in this, that this community has. Um, that uh, we should be proud of and that we've, we've spent a lot of resources and energy getting to this point and now the challenge going forward is going to be to maintain those then raise the bar and go to the next level. I know even just right before this interview I was chatting with you that I was recalling an interview we did with you years ago uh, about uh, you know you guys were installing the uh, frisbee golf, the disc golf mm -hmm. and at that time you know I was even kind of unsure you know is this something that you know, I mean, there were residents who had kind of petitioned for it, put it in, and you hope that it's going to yeah. be a success. And you were saying that it's just continued to grow in popularity so many years later. Yeah, you know, one of the things I get to do with my job is I get to interact with so many people, and that's been a really, uh, really gratifying and satisfying part of my job. But when people come in with ideas, you know, they come with ideas, you know. So we get, you know, different people, whether it be bocce ball or disc golf or skate parks or we get a lot of different alternative sports come in that aren't as well organized as soccer and hockey and football and and, and those kinds of sports and and uh, when this 
this, this disc golf group came. I didn't know anything about disc golf. These guys came and said, yeah, let's try this. You know, I said, well, let's try it. We, so we put eight or nine holes out there. Holy cow, it just took off. So pretty soon, we need more. You know? So we got the full 18-hole course out there now. It gets played year-round. It's, uh, it's great. People are outside. They're getting some exercise. They're socializing. You see uh, families. You see guys. You see gals. You see mixed groups. Um, so many people out there enjoying the outside. So they really... So that's been a huge success. And yeah, it was kind of fun, you know. It's a, uh, one of those things. And we, over the years, we've done projects out there to improve the course. You got the initial baskets in, and we've had Boy Scout do Boy Scouts do Eagle Scout projects out there to improve the course with different amenities. So um, that's that's been kind of fun. Yeah, working with people and seeing people use it, it's pretty gratifying. And I know another big project within the last couple of years was the uh, new library building. That you know that was you know such a fixture in the community, and people were nervous about. It leaving downtown and trying to find the right mm -hmm. space, but it kind of blew my mind that just right in that existing space there, you know, you have this beautiful building, and I know it's a county library, but I'm sure you guys were heavily involved with all that yeah, too. Yeah, more, more so our planning department and working with them on that. The county did a nice job on that library. They, like you say, they shoehorned it into that space that they had, um, and they did, they did acquire a little bit of property there on the east side to help with their parking situation, but. Yeah, they built a beautiful library, and it's downtown. Everybody wants to be downtown, man, so that's where they are. So, you know, would you have any advice for your successor, anything that you would tell them to, you know, ensure their success here for years down the road? Oh, I think you just have to be, uh, you have to listen to people and enjoy working with people. Um, you know, I think in the engineering department, we have so many people come into us with interesting problems that, that we see on a regular basis, so we know the solutions. You know, we have a, 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 some experience with some of these problems. I had a lady this morning just say, oh, my basement is wet all the time. What's wrong? I said, well, where do you live? You know? So she told me where she lives. I said, well, the groundwater table on that side of town is very high. So you have got groundwater coming into your basement because the water table is high. She never thought of that. She just thought, thought she had a surface drainage problem. So. She's got another issue to deal with, but you know we know those kinds of things because we know the lay of the land. We know what's going on underground as well as above ground. So I think somebody coming in has got to be able to listen to people and help them solve problems because sometimes we, um, as civil engineers, we just have the opportunity to, to have the knowledge and the, and the resources or the, and the ability to help solve problems. So somebody needs to come in and, and be willing to work with people. I think that's a big part of it. Um, people just get frustrated sometimes and they just need some advice or some, some good, uh, a good plan to move forward with. So that's, I think that's the most important thing of being in my job. You know, there's a lot of civil engineers out there. There's a lot of people in the public works business. And I think um, being able to, to work with people is probably the biggest thing. And I'm sure, you know, having to be able to work with other city staff and your council and all that. And it seems like just from somebody observing from the outside, the fact that there have been so many employees like yourself who have been around a long time. You had Mark Sather, the city yeah. manager, who retired uh, not that long ago, and he was there for a long time. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm guessing it must be a decent enough place to work if people are willing to stick around for 20, 30 some years. Yeah, it's been a good run. You know, we, we have great staff from the mayors and councils to the management staff to all of our people that we work with. Um, I've really enjoyed working there. And uh, it, as you reflect on 30 years and the people that have come and gone over those years, and I've seen a lot of them. People have touched bases the last week or so, and it's, you just you have, the good, you have good, a lot of good memories. But uh, we're like a family in there, and I'm, I'm proud to say that. And uh, and we do work sometimes a long time together, and, and I think sometimes we spend more time with our with our co-workers than we do with our spouses and our families. Unfortunately, sometimes that happens. But um, so we are get pretty tight, and um, but we have we support each other and. Just great working relationships with everybody at, at the city hall and and to public works and all of our all of our staff. So, yeah, it, it's really fun. It's a it's a great great organization and everybody's really really been fun to work with. So I've enjoyed it. So what do you think you're gonna miss most about it? When I understand Friday's your last day, so yeah. you know next Monday when you don't report to you know work in the morning, what, what do you think you might miss the most about it? I mean, maybe not right away, but... <laughs> yeah, I, well, I'm gonna... I, 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 it, we have a pretty fast pace. You know, we have a, a lot of stuff going on around there all the time. So I think it's, it's just stepping back from that. So I'm gonna miss being involved in, in a variety of projects. I have just so many different things I get to get involved in, which is exciting and fun. Um, but at the same time, while you miss all that activity, I think it's good to slow down a little bit. 
So I'm not going to be have my life be so scheduled anymore. You know, the two the two the second and fourth Tuesday council meetings, the third Thursday park commission meetings, all the other special meetings that we do to at nights and the mornings and weekends and stuff. Um, won't have that anymore, so I won't miss that at all. So I'm going to have more time in my life to do uh, things that I enjoy doing. And so I'm going to slow down a little bit. And so, but I will miss the activity. I will miss the association with the people. I'll miss you know, like yourself and everybody else in the community that I have you know relationships with or contact with. Um, so I'm, I will miss that because it's it's been really fun um, just being involved with all the different groups, whether it be Lions or the Rotary Club or downtown associations. Um, Skating associations, different athletic associations. Uh, I, I just got a call the other day from Lyle Hoff, who was who took the football association here from ground zero to, you know, to to the sky. And he's been retired for a few years, but he checked in, and you know, we were reminiscing about all the things that we did at Podvin Park to get that football, all the things that they did, and that we worked together on. So I'm going to miss those people and those associations because I've really enjoyed that. So yeah, it's been fun. Well, unfortunately, we're running short on time, mm -hmm. but I want to wish you the best of luck with your retirement you. and any any big plans or anything. We're just kind of no, not we're not we're not jumping off the earth and we're not doing anything crazy. Um, Anna is, is still working, so she's got a couple of years left that she's going to work. I am going to go fishing next week in the middle of the week, and with date to return uncertain, and so that's new for me. So we're going to go fishing and, and enjoy it, and when we get tired, come home. But uh, I have a lot of other interests and things around home that, I can, that I'm going to get more involved with. So, yeah, I just won't be coming here every day. Well, and I'll tell you, we do live stream the uh, council meetings online. So if you're ever home and just dying to <laughs> see what's going on with the uh, Wiper Lake City Council, you can watch it on yeah. the computer if you're really here. Yeah, I do have people <laughs> tune into that once in a while. I say, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I will or not. <laughs> yeah, I'll we'll probably give it a little time. But, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. but no, we wish you the best of luck, and thanks for all your great years here in Wiper Lake. And, okay. uh, just hope you have a great retirement. Thank you. It's been my pleasure to be part of the city. Thanks a lot. All right. And it's time for another short break. We'll be right back with more of Northeast Journal in just a minute. <laughs> Extra DWI enforcement is now being served on Minnesota roads. Don't be what you drink. Welcome back to Northeast Journal. If you're looking for a unique spin on pizza, try some from the Quad Cities in Iowa. You don't have to travel down to Iowa, though. You can go to QC Pizza in Matamidi. Take a look. There's a type of pizza that is beloved in a certain part of Iowa and Illinois called the Quad Cities, but is virtually unknown elsewhere. Dennis Schneckloff decided to change that by opening QC Pizza in Matamidi. I've been up here for 20 years and I just kind of got sick of my job and just said, hey, I want to do something different. My family's in the pizza business back home, so it just kind of came natural. I wish I would have done it 20 years ago because I would have been retired now. But I'm the only person in the state of Minnesota that I know of and in the country outside of the Quad Cities doing this style of pizza other than a place in Chicago, that's it. Dennis tells us what Quad City style pizza is. First off, we cut our pizza in strips not squares. All the toppings are underneath the cheese. The sauce is spicier. The sausage, there's a pound of it on a 16 inch, covers the entire pizza, which you have sausage on every bite. You're used to having sausage where it's like chunk, 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 chunk. Ours is completely different. Super lean, we cook it off ahead of time, then we regrind it, covers the entire pizza. There's malt in our crust. Also, our dough takes 48 hours to proof before we use it. QC Pizza opened in June and is already attracting a devoted following of former Quad Cities residents as well as Twin Cities pizza lovers trying it for the first time. And I think one of the reasons why it's so good is because we grind up our own cheese. Nothing is opened out of a can. My mushrooms I cook off in wine. We make everything from scratch, from the sauce to the dough. We cut up the vegetables daily. So I mean that's a huge difference. QC Pizza is located at 3150 Century Avenue North in Matamidi. A White Bear Lake nonprofit is building and delivering beds to kids in need. Sleep in Heavenly Peace is their name, and Brian Henschen introduces us to this group. S 
SHB is a nonprofit organization that builds bunk beds for families that uh, have kids sleeping on the floor, maybe a, like an air mattress, a couch, sleeping with their parents. So we contact businesses to help support building uh, the bunk beds because it's all donations. Uh, the materials were actually donated by uh, JL Schweitzer Construction this time. So we built 20 bunk beds or, or 40 total beds. Redeemer Lutheran Church donated 20 quilts. Then uh, once we get the mattresses and the, the sheets and everything, we will uh, go out and deliver those to the families that have put in requests on the website. Seems like when you um, you know want to kind of give and donate to an organization, it's it's kind of always just financial. Here you can actually get your hands dirty, get get in and, and do the work. You can go out and deliver to a family. So when I mean, you can see those kids, they hop into those beds, and they they can't get out because they're so excited. It's the first bed they may have had. I mean, it's it's so great. My wife runs the childcare center, so there's a couple employees that came out for that. And I hear it's close so, by. Yeah, <laughs> in the same building actually. Uh, we have this extra space on the back side of the building that we own and we were renting it out and that's that's another reason that kind of said hey we, you know we've got this this good opportunity and all the puzzle pieces kind of fall together that SHP needs a spot to build beds and hey let's make it work. Scott and Sean are actually my next door neighbors. Uh, they didn't ask for any donations. They they told me about what they were doing with these bunk beds and I thought this is a, it's a great opportunity for the company that I work for to donate materials that we use every day, you know, on a daily basis. So it, it wasn't stuff we had to order. It was everything on his material list was stuff we had in stock. So I think it was a real good cause and we were on board right away. That's all we have time for on this month's show. Thanks for tuning in and join us again next month for another edition of Northeast Journal.